start by saying happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the audience. I want to thank you all for all that you've done for your children. My mother worked tirelessly, loved selflessly, and built me the brightest future that I could have ever dreamed of. This speech is for her and for all of you. President Scott, Provost Kim, trustees, faculty, and staff, proud families, and loyal friends of these wonderful friends of mine, the class of 2010. After four indescribably challenging yet rewarding, puzzling yet definitive, seemingly endless yet bittersweetly concluded years, my friends, we've done it. Class of 2010, today we graduate. Today is the first day of the rest of our lives, and good lives they will be. But tomorrow is monumental. Tomorrow it begins, and I have a feeling you're going to love tomorrow. <laughs> Yesterday, society was paranoid about us, and they had good reason. We're the ones who grew up all those neon colors of the 1990s, and Nickelodeon slimes seem to surge through our veins. Yes, we've always been a little different. They've always wondered how we'd reach tomorrow. Yet we find our generation characterized by elements of idiosyncratic ingenuity. From Google, to Lady Gaga, to going green. And we've endured moments that have rattled the world. From the insanity of the Virginia Tech massacre, our freshman year, to the recent death of our one loved king, a pop culture icon, just last year. But from the iPhone to Iraq, it seems we've always lived along the margins of history's most captivating stories, whether we chose to or not. But as we looked through our yesterdays, we did not sit idly by. Though on some occasions, all letters may have been pulled, and though social networking sites have often trumped statistics homework, we've always managed to pull it together and to pull it off, to defy our doubters, even when those who doubted us most were ourselves. Think about it. From lots of love and community service days to St. Jude's up till dawn and blood drives, we have always been about helping hands and giving spirits, actively pursuing the causes we believed in. I remember an election, the first presidential election in which we could cast our vote. Now I remember they were worried. Did we know what we were voting for? Would we turn out? Then I remember news reports overflowing with awe as we came out. We came out in record numbers, educated, enthusiastic, and championing candidates ranging from the first woman to the first African American to a decorated veteran war hero, all of whom recognized the significance of us and our vote, all of whom were sure to stop in this small community along their huge historic campaign trails. No. Not for one day did we ever sit idle. The class of 2010 is not idle. We are idols, role models for those who will follow in our footsteps. We contributed scholarly discoveries and furthered the intellectual spectrum. We have given it our all, whether on the stage, on the court, at the academic conference, vaulting through the air, or rowing along the Muskingum. Big dreamers and even harder workers Gathered here today, we know that we've changed this world already. But just think, think of what we're going to do tomorrow. Now that itinerary, it's ambitious. So are we. It will require nothing short of innovative ideas, impassioned hearts, and tenacious faith, especially in each other. Let us live up to our name and take the long blue line to the front lines of the future. Take a look around you. That line envelops all of us like a ribbon of honor. Gather here today the future teacher who will empower and inspire the youth of tomorrow. The economist whose fresh ideas and insightful wisdom will heal our wounded economy. The pastor who will guide the congregations of tomorrow, instilling each of them with sustaining faith. The journalist who will cover the headlines made tomorrow. The psychologist who will help us better understand one another. We do get crazy sometimes. <laughs> the leader who will facilitate modes of compassionate communication and responsible cooperation. And of course, the historian 
who will remind future generations of those definitive days circa 2010. My friends, each of you are vested with the potential to make that very history. My advice to you all, it echoes that historic campaign trail. Hillary Clinton said, always work hard, aim high, and care deeply about what you believe in. And when you stumble, keep faith. And when you're knocked down, get right back up. And never listen to anyone who says you can't or shouldn't go on. My friends, those are words to live by. Because life throws curveballs. People will tell you no. But the good thing about life is that life is what you make it. The causes we believe in, the people we share our lives with, the reasons we wake up every morning. These are too important not to fight tooth and nail for. Never give in, never give up, and never forget that. Yes, we've always lived along the margins of history's most captivating stories, whether we chose to or not. But tomorrow, we become the authors of those stories. And we've got strides to make. It may be 2010, but progress is a process. We need to champion the causes that will better all of our lives tomorrow. From civil rights to labor rights. From women's rights to gay rights. From children's rights to disability rights to veterans' rights. We come from all walks of life, and we have been blessed to have families, friends, and heroes who have lifted us up. Let us never forget whose shoulders we're standing on or whose paths we must continue to ensure are walkable. Because those who worked so hard to get us here today, they knew that we'd usher in a better tomorrow. And so today, we will look that burden square in the eye and pledge to uphold it. I know you all well, and I know you won't disappoint. John Wayne spoke the words, tomorrow, is the most important thing in life. Comes into us at midnight, very clean. It's perfect when it arrives, and it puts itself in our hands. It hopes we've learned something from yesterday. Tomorrow is critical, my friends, because all eyes are gonna be on us. When that clock strikes midnight tonight, you'll know, not that you've found tomorrow, but that it has found you. And when it asks what you've learned from yesterday, do not speak. Demonstrate. At this pivotal juncture, we have a history to write, a world to improve, a moment to seize, and not a second to spare. And so that is our mission, Class of 2010, to build that bright future, to bolster that better world, to blaze that very, very brave trail. So armor up, saddle up, rest up, rest now, and rest well, because you're going to love tomorrow. Thank you.